What's going on, party people? Welcome back. And this time it is not top 10 gaming. It is top 1 gaming. Top 1 platinum game announced this past direct. That's right, Astral Chain. And today we're going to be talking about it. Let's, uh... This is just going to be a one-take thing. I'm just using OBS so I don't go back and edit it. I have all the stuff set up. Uh, let's just watch it through one time. You guys have seen it. Let's check it out. I'll just comment on it as we go. <clears throat> all right, we need to stop the video. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I already love the aesthetic. Let's be real. Uh, futuristic cities, that is my jam. I love it every time I see it. I love trailers like this that just sort of show you things that the characters do and they're like, we're not going to explain this at all. Just know that this is the world we live in and this is normal for these people. God damn, looks so sick. We got motorcycles in this game. You've never seen a motorcycle in a video game. Certainly not an action game like this. We got animals. You've never seen those before. How fools. You people are leading all of humanity straight to damnation. You can't say that in a Nintendo Direct. You're the terrorist here. My heart goes out to you, too. All because of how you were born. Doomed to be used by those idiots until you die. Chained to your <clears throat> fate. Powerless. Today has been ah, I get it, they're chained to their fate like the game. Ready for the final okay. stage. What the hell are, are they? they? Why, Why did you make them? them? I really hoped you two wouldn't get caught up in all this. Alrighty then. That's the trailer. Uh, now it's time to talk about the good stuff. Are you ready? Uh, let's just jump right into it one more time. So this is just the standard little opening here. Got the... Okay. I'm going to stop right here because this is a really important thing. You see these two? These two are basically the main characters... Uh, they don't have names, so we're just gonna call them, here's the chick, here's the dude. Alright, I hope my cursor is also being captured. Oops. Wait a second, how do I check that? Oh, no! Wait, 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 I got this. Yes, okay, my cursor is being captured. <laughs> Sorry, uh, <clears throat> so here's the chick, here's the dude. I'm just gonna call them that, because they don't have names at the moment. Uh, pay very close attention... Uh, I've seen some people mention, like, oh, is this going to be, like, a co-op thing? At no point in this entire trailer will you ever see both of these two on screen at the same time during gameplay. You will see them at the same time during this cutscene here. They're never here at the same time during gameplay. So, we got our little enemy spawning. I guess this is New Affinity or Marionette or... Dogu or whatever game you want to go with. So yeah, they attach these things to their wrists. And then... They launch them out like dual discs. And then you see, they open up and they start summoning something. This thing starts materializing. And notice they each summon one of these. This is important. I don't know... Uh what this thing is called, so we're just gonna call, I see it says SV05 right here, we're not gonna call him that, we're just gonna call him Robot Dude, so, Robot Guy, okay, this is Robot Guy, he's very important, we'll get to him in a bit, oh, it says Neuron, okay, we're gonna call him Neuron, bear with me on this, so here we go, we see the chick fighting with Neuron here, uh, very cool, just like, first attack, uh, from like, the very first frames, you see, oh look, here's the chain. That's why it's called Astral Chain, isn't it? 
And what I'm thinking is that you basically fight using this guy as a weapon. So yeah, we're gonna send out Noron. He's gonna like launch forward. And then the chick here is gonna use the chain to be pulled into the enemy. And now that they're both in front of this enemy, she's gonna do a little slide over to the side. And their, their attacks always go off at the same time. So they're both going to attack. And then she has this really sick move where she like swings him around and uses him like for a launcher. That's so sick. And then again, she uses the chain to like meet him in the air. And then they slam down on the enemy. Uh, I want to jump back a little too because there's another thing that happens during this little scene. Look at that. This enemy has like the little dizzy stars, like, you know, in the dizzy emoji. Uh, that is straight out of Wonderful 101. And in fact, I have a little, I got a picture of this ahead of time. I spent a lot of time looking for a good picture of this. Here, look at this. Right, uh, when you stun enemies in Wonderful 101, they would have like little blue dizzy stars over their head. That was also an important mechanic because you would get 100 combo points every single time you hit a stunned enemy. Uh, specifically one that was in like the blue stun state. And enemies who were in that stun state had different uh, properties. So you could launch them into the air if you used a rising attack. Uh, certain other moves would stun them. They couldn't move while they were like that. <clears throat> So I think that is relevant. That's probably why this enemy was able to be launched into the air because he had got hit with like the little dizzy effect. And then they were doing like the rising attacks to him. So the fact that it reminds me of Wonderful 101, I'm sure you can guess is exciting. So yeah, uh, this guy right here, Neuron over here, we're, I'm deciding to call him and the chick, they're always attacking together. So I'm pretty sure the way he works is that his moves mirror yours and you have a bunch of attacks that use him okay this guy so now we're playing as the dude uh for starters he's got a gun that is what i like to see devil may cry bayonetta uh there was another game it was near all of those games have like long range options that you can use and I'm, I just like when they're there. They're usually a really nice way to sort of string combos together when you are far away from an enemy and you just need to hit them once or twice before you come back in for your next attack. In Devil May Cry and in Nier, you can equip different long-range options. So you get different pods in Nier, you get different guns in Devil May Cry. Probably you're going to have different guns in this game. Bayonetta doesn't get different guns. Uh, she has the same attack on Square for the entire game, so maybe not. We'll see. Uh, this is interesting to me, though. So he starts shooting this enemy. The enemy sort of, like, warps over to him, and then he does, like, this instant command. It doesn't look like a parry, either, because this enemy is, like, not attacking him. Not yet, at least. Uh, and so what happens is... The enemy sort of gets pulled into the attack, and he's just, like, standing here for this. He waits for this attack to happen. So it looks like he did some sort of attack that pulls this enemy into him, and that's just how the attack works. I should also mention we are now playing as uh, the dude here. He also has a neuron of his own. So, yeah, he swings neuron around, hits him with the chain. This guy just goes flying back. That's just sort of how that works. I'm wondering how that attack works, because it looks like a parry the way it sort of just locks the enemy. Usually you need very special moves if you're going to do special things like that to an enemy, but who knows? Uh, okay, we're playing as the chick again. She's got her Neuron, and she does... This scene right here is probably, like, the really cool thing in this game. Uh, back a couple more frames. Nope, nope, we already saw this guy get wrecked. Oh man, look at like pieces flying off this guy. Get destroyed. Okay, so, Noron, uh, she sort of sends him out. He loops around the enemy. And then as soon as they sort of like meet. Ah, oh, I wish this, 
I wish YouTube's frame by frame thing wasn't so slow. Yeah, you get like these little chain effects. And then the chain effects all link into the ground. And then this guy is just like stuck to the ground like as they sort of pull everything down. And then they just are back into regular combat phase and they can dash back into him. <clears throat> this is clearly a different move. This is sort of like a stinger move because she doesn't like throw him first and then follow with the chain. They just immediately go in to fight this guy. And then they're just doing like the usual like multi-hit combo. That's sort of the end of that. Uh... <clears throat> This scene right here is very interesting to me because right at this point, they do like a little cutscene attack. So here's the guy again, he's with Nora on here. Uh, he's got like the little handout, like now you're done. I was very confused about this because there are very rarely like cutscene attacks in platinum games. Uh, that's like a thing you see in a bunch of Musou games, you know, you do your special move and then everything pauses and you get a cool cutscene, but in character action games, very rarely do you see cutscene moves. I think the only ones I can think of are in... There are a couple in Bayonetta, and guess what, you guys? I actually came with... Bayonetta on hand. Hey, what's going on, people? Uh, be sure to like the video. Uh, YouTube's being really rough recently. Okay. Okay, so, the only sort of, like, cutscene moves that I can think of are the ones where you hold the dodge button, so there is Witch Twist. That's sort of a cutscene. That's sort of all you get on that one. But then, there's Umbrin Portal Kick. <clears throat> so yeah, obviously they're very specific, like, cutscene that you get for that. Uh, and then the last one I can think of is just Breakdance. So yeah, that's like... Those are the only, like, cutscene attacks I can think of. And they're usually not, like, super good. I mean, Umber and Portal Kick is good because you can chain them together like this. And you are just invincible for this entire animation. So, like... Uh, why am I bad now? So, like, I'm just invincible that entire time while I'm doing that. Uh, so the cutscene attacks can be broken. They can also be really good. They can also just suck. I very rarely think to use these moves, but that doesn't mean they're bad. That just means that, uh, just means that I'm bad, honestly. Push back over to... Okay, shut up. Like, really shut up. Okay. So he's got this special, uh, cutscene attack... And then I was thinking, okay, well, wait a second, what if this isn't, like, a special attack, but this is actually a finisher? Uh, you know, like, you finish the enemy off, and it's like, alright, you just finished this fight, we'll give you a cool cutscene as you finish this enemy off. This enemy doesn't seem like they're in any great duress. They, she just seems to be sitting there as they zoom in with their, uh, big shot. Yeah. But yeah, it does look like he hit this enemy, and then it's now time to activate this. If there were HUD elements, which there never are in these trailers, maybe it's something similar to like a torture attack in Bayonetta, where once you're close to an enemy and you have enough of a certain resource, whatever this game's resource is, Astral Juice, some will assume, then it's like, okay, activate special move. Because, as soon as he hits this guy, I was like, wait a second, what happened to that enemy? Go back a whole bunch. Yeah, as soon as she gets hit, uh, she sort of, like, flies back for a second. And I was like, okay, what happens to her after this sort of, like, particle effect plays out? I'm pretty sure this enemy just got completely vaporized. She's gone. There's, uh, there is not but a remnant left of her. 
Yeah, you see, as soon as the particle's cleared, that's like, that's it. She's just gone. Uh, <clears throat> so, torture attack might be applicable. Um, I should probably just, like, switch quickly to Bayonetta just to sort of, like, demonstrate that. Hold on a sec. Let's run over to this next fight so you can sort of see what I mean. Nope. Let's go. Give me that. I need this for what I'm going to show off. Okay. So yeah, obviously I hit this enemy, and then I can sort of pull him into this cutscene attack. Nope. You. So yeah, uh, other to... Oh. Okay, there we go. We get on the floor. I don't have enough magic, so I'm smart. Okay, there we go. So there we go. <clears throat> Just sort of pull enemies for attacks like that. Uh, that's a good demonstration of that for the moment. I'll have other stuff to show off in just a moment. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that was definitely, like, some sort of attack where it was either the finisher or, like, a special whatever the equivalent is for torture attacks, because this enemy just gets vaporized, so I'm thinking there's going to be something like that in the game. Right here, we just get, like, a little more cutscene stuff. However... Uh, the chick drives out with a motorcycle and then two enemies follow after her. I'm thinking that since a lot of action games usually have like some sort of alternate gameplay stuff to break up the uh, constant combat, uh, you know, Bayonetta has like its space harrier sections, which Wonderful 101 also had. Nier had all of its uh, shoot 'em up segments. Devil May Cry had those strange water levels. And it also had a shooter segment, like, right at the end. Wonderful 101 had way too many shooter segments and different and weird ones. Although I didn't hate them, but... I'm thinking this game is going to have some sort of cool motorcycle combat. From this point on, we're going to see a lot of motorcycles show up. And for this scene right here, I'm actually genuinely curious whether or not this game is going to have uh, an overworld or some kind of hub world or something like that. Because this segment right here, it looks very nice, could easily just be a big chunk of, like, uh, one level in the game. Same with this right here. This could just be a chunk of a level, or this could actually be part of the overworld. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to an overworld. You know, something like Nier or Okami, that would be really nice. Uh, but I also wouldn't be opposed to it being, like, Bayonetta or Metal Gear Rising which also had stuff like this. But I mean, imagine you could like run up this and go over here, you explore this area and this, everything connects. It would be cool if this was uh, an overworld, but I honestly don't mind if it's not. I have like no horse in this race. More motorcycles. Also notice we have not seen those two on screen together like since the beginning, I don't think. Um, Oh yeah, in this scene, the uh, the watchdog scene that I think someone compared it to before. I don't know what this is. This does not look like a cutscene because the chick here does not react as she's walking up to this. Maybe there's like some voice clip that plays in the game. Maybe this is just a thing that the characters do. I'm willing to bet this is some sort of mechanic. Maybe you like scan enemies and it's like, oh, you can get a sense of them. Or maybe this is like the witch time replacement if you dodge an enemy at the right time, you get a sort of, like, scan on them and you get to read their actions. I don't know. I don't know what this is, but it looks cool, and this doesn't seem to be part of a cutscene. just seems to be a thing that's happening. But now, oh, now we're getting into the good stuff. All right, 
This guy also says Noron, so we'll just call him uh, Noron Dog. Uh, dog, whatever. Robot Dog, Blade Wolf, I don't know. You think of whatever, but notice he's also got the collar and he's attached by the astral chain. So I'm thinking this probably isn't a big revelation. This guy, like all the Noron guys that we've seen... They're the weapons in the game, and you get to swap them out and choose different ones throughout the game. He's got, like, a little paw print thing over his head, I guess maybe so you can track where he is. Or maybe he's got, like, different modes throughout the game. Like, when he sees an enemy, maybe this turns red. I don't think so, because we see him fighting enemies later. But, point is, uh... We saw Noron before carrying a bow. This guy, Dog over here, has a sword... So these guys are, like, definitely the weapons. We only see the sword when they've got the dog. We only see the bow when Noron's got it. Uh, I don't know who that is. That's Devola. That's, uh, I don't know, Hal Emmerich. Oh, damn, look at that wink. More motorcycles. <clears throat> this part. Oh, my God, okay. So we're like standing up here and there's a dude down here. I'm wondering like, is this some sort of stealth takedown? Do we have like stealth segments? <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look at this. Okay. I didn't notice this before when I watched the trailer. Like, he's got a question mark over his head. I'm thinking there's stealth segments in this game just because of this. Um, especially because, look at this guy. We've been fighting like some demons earlier. Uh, where's a picture of like anything we've been fighting? Okay, uh, all the things I'm skipping to are super blurry. That's nice. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, we've been fighting some horrific demons. This is just some dude, uh, some security guard for something. So it's probably just some segment where it's like, oh, don't let boring foot soldier number one over here see you. And then you've got, like, cool stealth takedowns where Noron jumps in, wraps him up with an astral chain, and he's like, uh, uh. He's just gone. Hold on, go back. There you go. You know when you feel like this? I know when you feel like this. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so this is cool because uh, this is like the bow attack that Noron had again. Uh, but there wasn't any cool cutscene for it. And here she just uses it for an environmental thing to cut this down. So yeah, she just, like, shoots that. So this seems to be, like, a very simple-to-use attack. It definitely seems a little long-winded for combat, so it's not going to be the same as the gun. I assume the gun is just something you have on hand at all times. This is probably something you use mainly for the environment. Oh, and he also just, like, disappears instantly. So yeah, you are constantly, like, summoning these guys for attacks, and then they disappear and go back to you. Uh, the effect actually reminds me a lot of Nier. Um, if you've played Nier Automata, then you know that, like, whenever you use a weapon, uh, 2B will sort of just leave that weapon on the ground where she had it, and then the weapon will just disappear and reappear on her back. So you have this little, like, particle effect. Oh, look at those, like, the blue and pink sort of, like... That's cool. That's some vaporwave shit right there. That's what I'm into. Oh, and this part right here? This is what makes me think that it's going to be an overworld. Because see, she just like... Oh, no, you're playing as the dude here. Uh, he just like goes and captures this random dude that's on the street. It makes me think that it's one of those like... Uh, oh, there's a robbery in process things. Or just like one of those random occurrences. Mm. Need some water. I'm talking way too damn much. I don't know. This doesn't look like part of a level. This just looks so incidental. You know what I mean? Also, peep this Burger King looking over here. Songbird Diner. And look at this amazing slogan. Eat. Drink. That's it. Eat. Drink. <laughs> I don't know who the hell wrote... I I want to believe that whoever wrote this, they wrote eat, drink, 
And then they're like, what do I put after that? You know, like some sort of eat, drink, love, or eat, drink, live, some sort of cheesy thing. They just wrote eat, drink as a placeholder, and they thought, I actually love how that looks on its own. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, I just wanted to point this out. I love eat, drink. Damnation. Okay, so yeah, here's another, like, cool scene. In fact, the fact that this transitions to a cutscene makes me think, like, oh, all you have to do is tie this guy up and you're good. Because, you're yeah, even, like, that little zoom in at the end. That almost looks like a... Yeah, that looks like a little mission complete thing. Like, you caught him. There we go. That's it. The here. Oh, this part looks cool. Oh, look at this monster right here. Look at... Okay. Look at these two right here wearing, like, the most boring basic uniforms. I feel like these are going to be, like, the basic foot soldiers of the police, like the grunts. When you see any of these guys roll up in this uniform, expect them to just get fugged. Like, that's just going to be it for them. If they don't have the cool uniform like our main characters do, they're just going to be, like, uh, to borrow a phrase, the red shirts of the game. You know what I mean? They're just... <laughs> They're just there to show off how cool the opponent is. Also, look at this guy. He's cute. He's got, like, little stickers on him. I hope this is, like, new P-Star. More Wonderful 101 references. I'm surprised at um, how much in this game is reminding me of Wonderful 101, actually. So, yeah. This thing right here, this looks like an enemy from Xenoblade Chronicles X. Like, a specific enemy from that game. Just one of the regular enemy types in the game. But the face actually reminds me a lot of Metal Face from Xenoblade Chronicles 1. All because of how you were born. Do this scene is kind of sick. This kind of reminds me of <laughs> that one boss from Devil May Cry 2. If you were at that stream, you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, or if you're Cassie, because I shared the clips with her, and that was one of my favorites, because it was one of the bosses where I did not touch the analog stick. At all. Once I walked up to the boss, I'm just like, I'm not touching the analog stick. Okay, but this part is sick. He jumps up on the dog, and he starts, like, riding around. And then here's the thing where, like, this falls on him while he's riding, and he dodges out of the way. But he's still on the dog. So, like, uh, you know, Bayonetta, she can turn into a panther. It's whatever. There's tons of, like fast movement options in all the other action games, but usually when you dodge, you have to stop doing those, and you, like, have to restart. So you have to restart your run, or the Unite Ball in Wonderful 101, turn back into a panther. He dodged this attack and is still on the wolf, and just continues to move around, unless, like, the moment after this scene cuts, uh, the dog, like, disappears in the little vaporwave effect, and then he has to get back on the dog. I don't know. I'm thinking that you just get to, like, keep riding, and this is, like, one of your methods of attack. Uh, either way, it looks really sick. So it seems like whoever you have equipped not only affects your offensive options, but also your movement options. So, like, regular Neuron Robot, he's definitely not going to have this kind of cool movement thing, but he does have long-range attacks, whereas the dog over here, you can ride him. Die. So this is cool. This is, this part right here is actually kind of a trip. Uh, okay, so you see, we've got the chick here with Noron. They're pulling him down. And this looks a little weird because it looks like he should have been like suplexed, but somehow that threw him. Uh, also, I just want to point out this little area where they're fighting him. Kinda reminds me of the Mecha Wiggler boss fight from Super Mario Odyssey. That's an aside, completely irrelevant. Okay, so you see, we got Demonic Thing over here, and then this dude, he smiles! So I'm like, okay, the villain of this game is some sort of evil corporation, especially because uh, Metal Face looking over here has, like, this chick who seems to be in some sort of futuristic lab coat, so... we're ready for the final stage. I guess we can also talk about, uh... What sort of the, the people we see. Ooh, okay, never mind. Ball Screw it. Hand. This guy right here. Okay, see how he's got a red chain? That looks evil. Uh, but he's fighting one of the monsters. I'm thinking this guy right here, 
he's going to be like your rival in the game. He's the new Jean, Prince Borkin, uh, Virgil, uh, whoever, whatever game. Uh, Sam from Metal Gear Rising. He's the new... Yeah, look at him. Look at, how, look at how evil this guy looks using his own, like, red chain. This is the most evil-looking person in the world, but he's definitely going to be a good guy by the end. He's like, oh, I, I'm trying to help you out. We're actually on the same side. And that's why he's also got his own, like, robot. He's going to be the sickest fights in the game. Look at Kamiya with his supervision role. That's the most non-role ever. That's the we-wanted-to-put-your-name-in-the-game role. Okay, look at this guy. When he breaks out, he's breaking out of blue chains, though. This might be the same guy from, like, the last scene we just saw. Like, it's this guy's, uh... What the hell? Is it this guy? We get, like, a nice cut close-up of him. Oh, he looks kind of sick. I want to fight this thing. Okay, I don't think it's the same thing. No, it might be the same guy. I really can't tell. He's also Nora. I don't know what Noron is. We're gonna find out when the game comes out, obviously. Caught up in all this. Okay, here's a, an interesting thing. The actual person directing this game is the same person who did Nier Automata. Uh, and Nier's pretty sick. Um, all the stuff that is in Nier is really good. It's got five billion movement options. Uh, Nier's a pretty tight game, so... I'm excited for Astro Chain. Uh, and this, I think this is the last scene of the trailer, but it's actually kind of a trip. I just want to mention it. Here's the chick. She's coming out, ready to attack this guy. There's, uh... This is not the chick, however. And when they land, it's the dude. So, they're playing some tricks on us. Are these even, like, the same scene? This might have been the thing, like, in that one Smash trailer where they sort of, like, fake, um, having Richter and Trevor fight Dracula, where they just sort of, like, cut around very cleverly, but it's not even the same scene. Yeah, I'm thinking these are two completely different scenes. However, it is important to note, I've been talking about how you will never see those two on screen at the same time. I'm actually wondering how it works. Is each level like, okay, for this level you're going to play as this guy, and for the, or for this level you're going to play as the other chick. Is it actually like you choose who you play as and they have different properties, or is just each level sort of taking place on different stories? Uh, I'm very curious about that. I want to know how that works. The game comes out in August, and finally we're at the end of the trailer. There's just one more thing. The most important part. There we go. Uh, should I be analyzing this? I want to make some sort of joke about this. I genuinely have no idea what to make of this. Why do they put this at the end of the trailer? This is usually when it's like the big reveal. Usually when people end trailers with some extra thing, you see, like, the character walking up to, like, some door. Door starts to open, but we don't see what's behind it quite. Maybe there's, like, a shadowy figure, and it's like, oh, is that? But then the trailer ends, and we don't see it. No, no, no. And this one, it's, uh, the mascot guy kind of looking like that one thing from Splatoon 2. He walks up with his, like, taser thing. He also has one of the, uh... The neuron bracelets. Maybe he summons, like, some garbage collector robot. Uh, maybe that's the new, like, joke weapon that you have. Walks over here, throws that out. Obviously, this game... Oh, maybe this is, like, a job you get to make money, and this is an overworld game. Or maybe there's a morality system. It's like Mega Man Legends. You gotta throw garbage away. I have... I, I, I don't know what to make of this. And there we go. That's the end of the trailer. So, uh... Thank you for joining me. Now I hope you have a little more of an insight that the whole game seems to just be based around... Uh... One of these two characters 
and they've got a whole bunch of different robots that they summon using the titular astral chain, and you just fight using all of their different attacks, and it's going to be sick. I'm hyped for it. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming out. Be sure to drop a like, guys. Make sure you let me know what you thought.